Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. You might as well teach this to your children. Everybody say, Shema. Yisrael. Adonai. Eloheinu. Adonai. Echad. Echad. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God. The Lord is one. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated in Jesus' name. I want to preface my statement with this. I grew up in a society that uh, had very little respect for women because usually it was because of the women we was with. But as I got into the church and, and married a godly woman that there's no way I could live holy enough to suit her. We have a joint checking account. She puts it, I put it in, she takes it out. And, and, uh, and Brother David Gray, Uncle David, was writing a book one time on uh, Vogan David, the star of David. And, and we was in revival there. My wife said, uh, Mahaney, that's what she called me in our tender moment. She said, Mahaney. Why don't you go with Brother Grace? She said, you're part Jew. Hallelujah. And I got interested in my roots. And as I began to go to Israel and begin to study, I've been, uh, just got back from my 25th trip to Israel. And I began to study about the women of Israel and the godly women of Israel. God completely changed my concept of not only the Jewish lady, but the apostolic lady. You see, in Israel, we've got friends that they invite us to their house for Passover and, and Shabbat, the Sabbath. And, and uh, if you're ever introduced to a Jewish man and he introduces his wife, he doesn't say, this is my wife. You know what he says? Mm -hmm. The queen of the house. The queen of the house. When what the queen says goes. And in Israel, the ladies in all through the temple area were excused from what they call uh, Moed, which means the appointed times of prayer. The men had to go in the morning prayer, in the afternoon prayer, in the evening prayer, and they had to take the kids and babysit the kids and take them to the prayer meeting. But the ladies were left behind at the house because they were uh, used in times of danger and emergency to go on their face before God and begin to pray and begin to talk to God. Now, there's different seasons in a woman's life, and, and I'll never understand why ladies try to shun the seasons in their life. You ever seen pictures of that little girl in uh, Boulder, Colorado that somebody killed that she looked, she's four years old, looked like she's 35? I'll tell you what, if I ever commit a crime, I hope it's in Boulder, and they're the cops that's looking for me. Hallelujah. But they're not happy with the seasons. We got... 80-year-old grandmothers. I had a lady tell me the other day in the church, she said, our young girls doesn't have any standards. And I said, I'll tell you why they don't have any standards. you got 80-year-old grandmas running around with cold black hair trying to look foxy. Hallelujah. I said, the older ladies are supposed to set the example. <coughs> and there's different seasons in a woman's life in Israel. One is Isha, which means a relational woman. She relates to her family. She relates to her husband. She relates to her environment. And she's a relational woman. And then there's one called Enosh, which is a wounded woman. That's when they go to the housetop. That's when you want to leave them alone. And then in the book of Genesis, when God told Adam, said, I'm giving you a helper, the King James Version says, help meet. But in the Masoretic text, the original Bible, it said, I'm giving you a helper. The word there is azir. And that means I'm giving you a spiritual help. It's the same scripture in Psalms 46 where it says, God is our refuge and strength and a present help in the time of need. Come on, the greatest help I have in my ministry is this little prayer warrior sitting here. Come on. I'm going to tell you what, it's time for the ladies of the church to go to God in prayer like you've never prayed before in your life. Now, don't blame us men for everything because, because we can't help some of what we are. You see, the uh, left brain is logic. 
you got two sides of your brain. And uh, the left side is logic. And it's practical. Non-emotional. The facts. It likes tools and football. And that's where us men think. We shun emotion. And you women promise me something. You won't get involved in the emotional trap that us men have got into. That we're not supposed to feel anything and show our emotion. I told a men's conference, I said, I weep every day over my family. And if you think I'm a sissy, you try me right out here after service. See us men, you give us a title, we go crazy. All we got to have a title and the name on the door and a little brass thing on our desk. And we go mashugan and we go crazy. But the women think with the right side of the brain. And, and that's the side that gives you feeling, nurturing, emotions. And you're more comfortable with your emotions than we are. You can cry and touch. I still feel funny when a preacher says, everybody reach over and get a brother by the hand. Stand there holding hands with a dude. But you're comfortable with those emotions. And us men are uncomfortable. And, and, and there's connectors that goes between the two sides of the brain called corpus coliseum. And these corpus coliseum, uh, women have 40% more than men do. You can not only see the logic and see the need, but you see the emotion of the thing. We'll look at a house or something and I'll see the driveway and the, and, and the garage and my wife will see the wallpaper. I'm just not into wallpaper, man. But that's the reason God called you to the special position that you're in in these last days because you can feel the burden. Rabbis say that a woman is on the higher spiritual plane than the men are. That they can feel the things that men can't feel. We love a title and a desk and an office, but women love a cause. You give the women a cause. Come on, like Sister Ruthie was talking about. You give the women a cause, and they'll go to God in prayer, and they'll have a revival. See, when the ark came back, how many heard about the tabernacle of David and how David got out and boogied down before the ark? But did you know that the maidens were dancing with David? Come on. When his wife had despised the glory, God closed her womb and she never had anything. And she said, you danced with the maidens in Israel. The women went out. And you know, from Exodus 38 to Luke 2, the women served at the door of the tabernacle. When you walked in the door of the tabernacle, there was women leading the men into praise saying, come on, we got to praise God. And the last one under the law was Anna. When she saw the Messiah... See the difference in men and women? Simeon said, I'm ready to die because I've seen him. And Anna said, I'm ready to live because I've seen him. I want to live. I want to have revival. Now watch this. When the woman that was afflicted with scoliosis, the curvature of the spine, and uh, Jesus walked up to her and called her a daughter of Abraham, it blew everybody's mind because you could not be the seed of Abraham without circumcision. Come on. But Jesus said, I'm bypassing that legalism, and I'm putting you into the commonwealth of Israel, honey. Let me tell you something, ladies. You're the gates of life. You're the birth canal of this world. Nothing comes into this world that doesn't come from you. Come on, you go right down with pain and tears and crying, and you bring children into this world. And you know what? If you can look at the natural and the spiritual, the natural Israel is a type of the spiritual Israel. The last day revival is not going to be birthed by pulpiteers and guys that know how to phrase the words just right. It's going to be born by ladies in Zion that know how to go before God in prayer. Come on, I'm talking about know how to feel. Come on, we need, we need women that can get hot for Jesus. We need women that can get emotional for Jesus. Come on, I appreciate the emotion, Sister Ruthie, about our kids. Do you know what bugs me about what she was saying, 80% of our kids? I've never been to a prison. Even in our state of Arkansas, Sister Oaks, I've never been to a prison. I didn't see our kids that I preached to youth camps walk in that prison. They holler out, Brother Mahaney. And I walk over to his kids that I preached to in prisons. And they're in, I used to minister to them in youth camps. And now they're in prison. Come on. And you're so special. 
You're so special. Touch the one beside you and say, I'm special. Come on, you're not just a, somebody to sweep the floor and pick up the dirty socks and, and uh, throw the dirty underwear in the hamper. You're a spiritual help. Come on, you're the spiritual guard of that house. Just stay seated if you want to. I'll just read the scripture. Just trust me, I'm reading right. Listen, O daughter, Psalms 45. Consider and incline your ear. Forget your own people also and your, your father's house. So the king will greatly desire your beauty because he is your Lord. Worship him and the daughter of Tyre will come with a gift. The rich among the people will make you seek your favor. The royal daughter is all glorious within the palace. Her clothing is woven with gold. She shall be brought in, brought to the king in robes of many colors. See, the first part of this is dedicated to Shoshanim. But then the last part of it, if you look at the dedication of the 46th Psalm, is dedicated to Alamot. In the Hebrew, that means a high soprano. In the Hebrew, that means that this is dedicated to the daughters of Zion. The queen had to be introduced when she come in. The sons of the king, they had to say, Halekela uh, Absalom. And the, and the king's sons had to come in with introduction. But the daughters of the king never had to come in. They was just there. Hallelujah. They was just there. And what gave them the right to come in is they had a they had a certain garment that they wore. And when these girls were little girls, when they was born, it's called the covering of the king's daughter. They began to make these clothes for these girls. And they made them in beautiful geometric designs. And they, they made them out of, of, of white and gold and purple and scarlet. And the king's daughter wore these into the presence of God. No announcement. They just came. And nobody questioned them because they had the covering. <clears throat> Come on, the guards couldn't say, hold it there, babe. They had the covering. Nobody could touch the king's daughters because they had the covering. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, all she had to do was walk in because she had the covering. Come on, that's why God has given you ladies a covering. That's what Sister Rita was talking about. God has given you a covering. Now listen to me. Paul appealed to angels, and he appealed to five different dimensions about the covering. He appealed to angels, he appealed to tradition, and then he went to the, the, the Pesach, the Lord's Supper, and Paul, Paul appealed in five different ways. Because everybody knows, in spirit world, knows about headship and covering. See, we say, well, our ladies don't cut our hair, it's a church standard. You're not doing it for the right reason. Come on, you're doing it because you're showing the angels and the devil and God that you're under subject to your husband and he's under subject to God and, and Christ. Come on, it's got to be more than a church standard. It's got to be a way of life with us. When witches have a coven meeting, they draw a circle and there's 13 of them. I let them come and pray against me in revivals. I had them, I was preaching in Menden, Louisiana with T.W. Barnes and they took a sow hog and, and killed it and put the blood on the front porch and said, we don't mind Barnes being here or we don't mind Mahaney being here, but we don't want Barnes and Mahaney together. And Brother Barnes said, open the doors up. And he said, you witches out there, I got a message for you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. But a witch, because of headship, will not step into that circle without her head covered. Because every principality and every spiritual government has to honor headship and coverings. Our granddaughter, five years old, goes to public school in Egyptian school. Ten years old, fifth, fifth grade. 
See, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> she likes Christmas and all that stuff. I think it's ignorant. Hallelujah. She decorates for Christmas. I like the Hanukkah candles for our family and kids. And they like mine best because you get eight gifts on Hanukkah and only one from Walmart on Christmas. Hallelujah. But our granddaughter's in the fifth grade, and my wife always checks Ashley's uh, book she checks out of the library. And it's a story about a little girl that wanted a part in a school play. And she tried out for the part, and the list came down, and they give their part to her. Now, this is in a fifth grade school. Library. Let me handle this now, Queen. Hallelujah. We're not home now. And she goes and looks at the bulletin board to see if she got the part and she didn't get the part. So she goes home. She's sitting there crying, the little girl. And all of a sudden, her fairy godmother appears to her. And said, I can get the part for you if you want me to. And she said, I want you to. The next day she walks in, that little girl with the blonde locks has got them all cut off. And the little girl asked the fairy godmother, said, and probably a witch wrote this for our kids in the public school. Said, how did you get the part? And in a fifth grade school book in a public Egyptian school, she said, I took her power by cutting her hair off. Come on. I'm going to tell you what, there's an enemy that wants to rob our ladies. And it's not just your family that's on the line. I'm talking about prison ministries on the line. I'm talking about the home mission divisions that are on the line. I'm talking about our missionaries that are on the line. I'm talking about our godly ladies around the world are on the line. And you've got to have that covering when you come into the presence of God. You don't need to be announced. Come on, you're just there. There you are in the presence of God. I took her power. I took her power. You know when the Nazis came and took the Jewish ladies and put them in the the gas chambers? You know the first thing they'd done to the Jewish ladies? They shaved their head. You know why? Taking their identity. And Hitler had read Corinthians where a woman has power on her head. Come on. And Hitler said, I don't want those Jewish women getting that power and that glory and praying their families out of these death camps before we can kill them. Hallelujah. I'm talking about God's women and God's call on God's women. You women are just as called of God as, as, as Charlie Mahaney or Jack Cunningham or Kenneth Haney. I remember several years ago at a landmark conference, I was up here praying and I just got through preaching. And uh, me and Brother Stone King preached together that year. And uh, boy, that's two opposites, ain't it? Hallelujah. He's anointed, I'll tell you that much. Of course, he'd kill for my hair. Hallelujah. But I was up here, I was up here, and God spoke to me, and God said, go pray for my daughter, Joy. Didn't call her sister, hey, near. Said, go pray for my daughter, and she was laying over there on the floor, and I went over to Brother Stone King, I said, hey, come on, Leroy, let's go pray for Sister Haney. We went over there, and, 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 and she was in such a burden, I said, I said, Sister Haney, God sent us to pray, and she said, Brother Haney, God's called me to so many things, and God's called me to things, and to write different things, and she said, she said, uh, I'm afraid, I don't know if people will accept it, and I said, well, you've got a covering, hallelujah, remember that, I said, you've got a strong husband, and I said, you've got that hair, that glory on your head, and you've got a covering, and no enemy can get to you unless they come through your husband, unless they come through the angels to get to you. Come on, I think it's time our ladies knew who you was. You're not just a housekeeper, you're a helpmare. Come on. You're not just a wounded woman, you're a woman that God's called for a time like this. I've got a young preacher friend of mine, and I try to, I try to impart to young preachers. And this young preacher, I've taken him to Israel with me, and... and uh, Him and his wife wanted a baby desperately. Finally, they had a baby, and his little skull was open. You could see its brain in there. And and his backbone was uh, exposed. Spinal, what I don't remember what you call it. Bifida. There you go. Hallelujah. And he came to me weeping. If I called the name of his pastor, everybody in this church would know his pastor. He came to me crying. 
He said, Brother Mahaney, what shall we do? And I was sitting there talking to him and his wife. And I said, now I know what your pastor teaches. Have you cut your hair off? And she said, no. And I said, I'll tell you what I want you to do. I said, when your husband's over at the church, he's the assistant pastor and the youth pastor. When he's over there, I said, I want you to get down beside your baby and, and take those hairpins out. Shake that hair down. Hallelujah. And I want you to take that long hair and put it over your baby and say, God, I've kept my covenant with you. And you've given me this child. And I don't, want a, I don't want a little vegetable or an invalid. I want a healthy child. Hallelujah. Come on. I said, would you promise me you'd do that? And she said, I promise you I'd do that. Hallelujah. He called me the other day and he said, Brother Mahaney, our baby's been scheduled for five surgeries. And he said, every time just before the surgery, the doctor would come in and say, Reverend, I've got to talk to you. That baby doesn't need surgery. I don't know what the name of God you people are doing, but he said, that baby doesn't need surgery. He called me the other day and said, the baby's skull is closed up. His little backbone's closed up. Come on, it says, it's starting to talk. Hallelujah. Come on, ladies. When you pray over your family, you need to pull that hair down and say, we've got a covenant. Come on, God had a special covering for the daughters of Zion. He had been making that all their life. When she was born, the mama started getting that covering, that mantle. I was preaching in a church not long ago. I told Sister Haney when we was eating the day, whatever it was, whatever, a few weeks ago, hallelujah. And... I preached in this church where nobody had received the Holy Ghost in 10 years. If I someplace nobody got the Holy Ghost in 10 years, we'd have a message in tongues and interpretation. Yeah, I say, get out of here, Charlie. Hallelujah. Her and her husband, elderly people, worked two jobs and kept the PIMs and paid the electric bill. And I got to preaching on the women's covering, the mantle of the king's daughters. That when their king's daughters are born, the beautiful geometric designs are beginning to weave into that garment. And she walks into the king's presence unannounced. Nobody can touch her. It wards off all evil spirits that comes against the daughters of Zion. And I told about my friend that the baby was healed because her mama was praying with her hair down. And while I was preaching, I didn't know it. And nobody had received the Holy Ghost in that place where I was preaching in 10 years. I looked back and that mama was pulling the hairpins out of her hair. Hallelujah. And I thought, good God, what's she doing? And she stood up and shook that hair down and began to worship and hold that hair up. In about three minutes, the Holy Ghost fell in there. There was over 50 slain out of the power. Come on, 28 received the Holy Ghost. People were healed. Come on, you're not just a woman. You're a woman in Zion. God's given you a covering. Come on, the head of every man is Christ. The head of the woman is the man. The head of Christ is God. A woman ought to have a symbol of authority on her head because of the angels. Said a woman's long hair is her glory given to her for a a kippur in the Hebrew. Kippur, it's the same word as Yom Kippur, the day of covering. When the blood covers all the sins. Hallelujah. But you know what? If the enemy can, he'll take that covering. I was over praying, God, make Ruthie shut up. She's preaching my message. Hallelujah. She'll always be Ruthie to me. Hallelujah. I knew her when she was a pup. Hallelujah. She's so sweet. Hallelujah. Anybody ever heard of De- Deborah? You call us Deborah? She went to battle with Barak, which means lightning. She was fighting an enemy that had come. And I'm going to tell you when Israel got upset. Read that, Sister Juanita. Find you a microphone up here. Wake up in the sound room, boys. Hallelujah. The mother of Sisera looked out at a window and cried through the lattice, Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why tarry the wheels of his chariots? Her wise ladies answered her, 
Yea, she returned answer to herself. Have they not sped? Have they not divided the prey to every man a damsel or two? To Sisera, a prey of divers colors, a prey of divers colors of needlework, of divers colors of needle needlework on both sides, meet for the necks of them that take the spoil. Sisera had went plumb into the king's court, and he had taken the mantle from the daughters of the king. Hallelujah! He had taken the mantle and he wrote it, put him around his neck. Saying, Look what I done to them! I'm going to make prostitutes out of them. They're not holy Israelites. I'm going to make evil women out of them because I've taken their covering. Read in Second Samuel for me, sweetheart. How be yet? He would not hearken unto her voice, but being stronger than her, than she, forced now listen, her this is, and lay this, with her. Now listen, this is Tamar. Tamar, you would call her. This is Tamar. She's ravaged by her half-brother. Ain't it funny the things that we're related to and closest to sometimes hurt us the most? Come on, she was Isha, the relational woman. And then she was ravaged, she became Enosh, the wounded woman. And listen to what she done. Read, Mama. Then, then Ammon hated her exceedingly. So, Ammon hated her. So that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. See, the hate that the enemy has for you is greater than how he used to love you when you was in the world. Does it ever bother you the devil's more sold out on his kingdom than we are our kingdom? I never heard of two or three little devils getting together and causing a split and starting another hell. So you know what Tamar done? Read it, honey. And Ammon said unto her, Arise, be gone. Get out of here. And she said unto him, There is no cause. This evil in sending me away is greater. There's no reason this happened to me. Than the other that thou didst unto me. I'm a nosh. I'm a wounded woman. There's no reason this happened to me. But he would not hearken unto her. Then he called his servant that ministered unto him and said, Put now this woman out for me and bolt the out. door after her. I've used her. Now put her out. And she had a garment of divers colors upon her. Had her with, daughters. She was David's daughter. For with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins appareled. Then his servant brought her out and bolted the door after her. Threw her out. Read on. And Tamar put ashes on her head and rent her garment of divers colors that was on her and laid her hand on her head and went on crying. She put ashes on her head and took her garment, to her covering, and tore it. Hallelujah. See, the enemy wants to take you into attack after attack after attack. He wants to take you from Isha, a relational woman. He wants to take you to Anos, a wounded woman. But God wants you to be Azir, which means a help woman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then there's one called Ashit Hayil, which means after you've got where God wants you to, that you're a woman of authority and a woman of power. Have you ever, I, I, ask a, I ask a rabbi that's baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. I can't call his name because, because he'd get stoned in Israel. I said, let me ask you a question. When, when, when Rabbi Paul was talking about the wife sanctifies the unbelieving husband, how is that? Does that ever wonder you how a believing wife or your children were unclean? And he said, you know what that means, Reverend? He said, those godly women of Israel that live like God wants them to live, the light in them is greater than the darkness in their husband and their children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, he said, the light in them is greater than the darkness in your husband and in your children. Come on. I'm going to tell you what. God's give you a covering. You don't have to be announced. All you got to do is go for it. And God's give us an inheritance for these last days. Hallelujah. And we're going to have the revival God wants us to have because we got women that know how to get a hold of God and know how to cover themselves and know how to pray. There's, a, there's an interesting term. There's a gentleman in the Bible called Zelothed. Zelothed. He had no sons, but he had five daughters. And they call his daughters by this name. Ashihayel, which means mighty women. Forceful women. There was five of them. Let me just stop here and give you a little Bible numbers. 
One is the number of deity. Two is the number of agreement. Three is the number of resurrection. The third time, or the, the, the Jordan River is divided three times. The sheep was let down when Peter was on the roof three times. He broke bread three times. Come on. John was in the belly of the whale three days. Jesus was in the heart of the earth three days. And come up, went down and took the keys away from the devil. You ever stop to think about it? The devil can't even go home unless he asks Jesus. Five is a number of grace. Five daughters of brokenness. Zelophed means fractured or broken. These daughters got broken and got desperate. And you better watch out for desperate women. I'd rather have the mafia and the communist party after me than, than, than a desperate woman who knows how to get a hold of God and how to pray. Come on, hell's in for a rough ride in 1999 when these daughters of Zion take hold of this thing and begin to pray. Hell's in for a rough ride. I'm telling you what, that old ball-headed buck, tooth knock need, yellow belly skin back devil better hang on because hell's in for a rough ride. Five is the number of grace. Remember the woman who had been married five times? She was living in the sixth relationship. Six is the number of the flesh. But when she met the seventh man in her life, he took her back to the fifth. Hallelujah. Come on, I'm telling you, God will take you all the way back past the flesh and back to that fifth dimension. The fifth time Ruth's name is mentioned, she finds Boaz. The fifth time Boaz's name is mentioned, he finds Ruth. The Levitical order was five cubits by five cubits by five cubits with five sacrifices. Hallelujah. Remember when Ruth come back? Well, there's such a principle in the Bible. When Ruth come back, Boaz covered her. He took that tallit, that prayer shawl. By the way, these fringes on it are 613 mitzvahs or commandments that the Jews got to pray every day. And these longer strings are called tzitzit, and that stands for Echad Yahweh, one God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why, that's why when Elijah took the mantle, he took hold of the name of the one God and smote the waters. Come on. God's giving you a mantle, ladies. You need to take hold of the name and smite the waters that's trying to drown your family. Come on, don't sit there and look cute in that dress with your hair stacked up. Come on, the devil's taking our kids. The devil's taking our families. The devil's taking our health. Come on, get excited, women. Come on. Come on, you got a covering. You don't have to wait to be announced. Come on, you don't have to say, here's Rebecca, here's Ruth, here's Joy. You got a covering. Just walk right in. You're the daughter of the king. Come on, before 1999's over, we're going to see our kids shouting. Sister Oaks, we're going to see Nick and Matt jumping up and down and running the aisles and talking in tongues. <laughs> now listen to, the, listen, listen to what Boaz, listen to what Boaz tells the reapers. Listen, Boaz tells the reapers, when you see Ruth start reaching, you start dropping the wheat. Hallelujah. Come on, I don't believe any wheat fell until she started reaching. But when that mama started reaching, the reapers begin to drop the wheat. Come on, I don't believe it's going to fall until we start reaching. My God, if our ladies could get a hold of this daughter of Zion, we'd shake this United Pentecostal church. Moses is holding tribunal. Moses is holding court. And all of a sudden, one of the men turned around and said, uh, uh, Slicha, Moshe, excuse me, Moses. What? We've got a problem. What? We've got five daughters of Israel. And they want to talk to you. Moses started around and said, wait a minute. But God spoke to him and said, hear what they got to say and give them their answer. Moses said, bring them in. The little old daughters of Israel walked in there. Let me tell you something, Pastor Moshe. Our father died in the wilderness, broken. Had no sons. We got five, me and my four sisters. And God promised us an inheritance. It goes against the rules. It goes against the law. It breaks every bylaw in Israel. And Moses said, just a second. And God speaks to him and said, give them their answer. Give them their request. And they come to Israel. And Joshua was dividing the land. And there stands five daughters of brokenness. And Joshua said, wait a minute, hold it, hold it, hold it, just a minute. You guys stay right there. Come here, Mom. Come here, you five daughters. And they walk in. And he said, I'll tell you what. 
What tribe are you? And they said, Manasseh. Or Manasseh. Manasseh. He said, I'll tell you what I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you Gilead. Why? Because of your request, there's a healing bomb in Gilead that I'm going to give you. And everybody's going to come to you, five daughters of grace. If they want healing, the Romans are going to have to come. The Greeks are going to have to come. The Israelites are going to have to come. And I'm telling you, there's some daughters of Zion standing here today that God is going to give you your inheritance. Not just your family. He's going to give you, he's going to give you the bomb of Gilead. Come on. And your city's going to come to you. Come on. The PTA is going to come to you. Come on. Ladies of Glow is going to come to you. Come on. Women at War is going to come to you. Mad is going to come to you. You know why? Because you're different. Remember Brother Cunningham talking about uh, Caleb? Remember brother, last night Brother Cunningham mentioned Caleb? Caleb was on the other st- end of the stick with uh, Joshua. Hallelujah. Caleb had a daughter named Aksa. Aksa. You're not going to get it. I'm going to leave my five sons out. And I'm going to give it to Aksa. And in the inheritance I'm going to give you, there's not only lower springs, there's higher springs. When it dries up down here, you can move up higher and get your touch with God. Come on. A woman in England had 25 kids. I sat down one day and figured out how many months she spent pregnant in her life. 25 kids. The only way she could pray is to take her apron and put it over her head, and that was her covering. That little mama praying under that apron. Birth John and Charles Wesley. Come on, God's called your kids to be evangelists. God doesn't want me having to go to the penitentiary and visit your boys and girls. Come on, they don't need to be on an axe program trying to get them off of drugs. Come on, we don't need to put them in some drug seminar or some seminar where they don't listen to rock and rap music. Come on, God intended those kids to be children of God. Now listen to me. You've been pre-shrunk, pre-cut, pre-fit. You'll fit where nobody else can. You'll fit where nobody else can. I was driving down the highway a while back in my car and got to worshiping God. I was listening to one translation of the Bible on tape. I was reading two. I had one on the dash. And I, and I was reading the Jewish New Testament by, by uh, Dr. David Stern. Everybody needs to read that Jewish New Testament. He talks about the ladies. He says, what do you want to look like the prostitutes that cut your hair for? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I got to study that. And I had to stop my car and get out and run around the car and shout and dance. Somebody said, well, what if somebody would have drove by? I didn't worry when I was out in some dance hall dancing and boogieing and shucking and jiving. Come on, I want to know why we get out there and jump up and down for the devil. And we act up for the devil. But we get in here for Jesus Christ. And we sit there and act cute. And our family's going to hell. And God's given you a covering. You can walk right into the king's presence. I was praying about this. And I was praying about the, the, uh, Hayil, the strong woman. And I said, God, this contradicts the strong woman. Because women are the weaker vessel. And he spoke to me right back to as clear as God's ever spoke to me and said, my strength is made perfect in weakness. He said, you're too tough and too bullheaded. I can be in a crowd of 50 men and I'll say, let's all shout. And we'll all be looking at our tie, trying to figure out each other's golf score. Whether we was in the woods and bushwhacked Bambi or not. I can say the same thing to the mamas. And an hour later, they're crying. I was in an airport a couple years ago and I lost my wife. The stewardess says, 
The plane's leaving. I said, I can't find my wife. She said, page her. And it was in Dallas, Texas. And I said, she, Helen, I said, this is Reverend Mahaney. I want you to page my wife. Here's what I want you to say. Juanita Mahaney, get your hide back to the gate. She said, I can't say that, Reverend. I said, where's your office? She said, I'll say it. And I looked at coming out of the ladies' room. She had a lady with her. And they was crying. How in the name of God you can develop a relationship? See, us guys don't say anything in there. We don't even look from side to side. Man, we just walk in there, hallelujah. But she came out, and they had been praying over the lady's daughter who was in jail and on drugs. Come on, that's what I'm talking about. Come on, you can feel. God's got something in you for this last days. Listen to me. You're Boaz. You're David. Your king has you covered. And the devil's not upset about where you're at. He's upset about where you're going. God's got things to release in you that you've never dreamed of. I know you're a limping president, princess. Come on, but don't be embarrassed because of your limp. We've all been to the desert. You need to realize that I'm a person that can't. But my God is a God that can. The crisis never stole your dream. Come on, you've been through the crisis, but you just keep on, you're bleeding from wounds that someone else inflicted in your life. You smile and you worship and you're covering up the hurt that's inside. You worship with a heaviness. Mostly tears, there's no joy, just weeping and tears, there's no joy. But when you come in and you've got that king's covering, the king stops all the business. Hallelujah. Things that hold you in the night affect you in the light. There's been special assassins sent after you, but they couldn't get to you. You hear me. The Holy Ghost is telling me as a a spirit of prophecy, God's going to pour oil on your torn flesh. Come on, you've been baptized into God's timing. You're not just Anos, which means a a wounded woman. You're Azir, which means a help. And I see Hayel, which means a powerful woman. You're the daughters of brokenness. He's the El of your Bethel. For I would speak unto you clearly, my daughters, this day. I saw your weeping in the morning. I saw your burden at night. I've noticed your tears. I can't look away from you because you obey and you had that covering. I see how you've wept. I saw you as attack came through your finances and even your family. I heard your husband say those words and it hurt. I've seen you as the tears rolled. I've seen you as you said, is there any hope? But you are, are as my Esther. Before I called her Esther, her name was Hadassah. Hadassah means a little tree. Esther means my star. You've been the bent tree in prayer. I'm going to make you the star. And I'll pour my anointing on you. Every preacher that steps to the pulpit when you hear him preach, know that you're part of his ministry because you prayed for the anointing upon this last day church. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. It's time for you to prophesy over the attack in your life and prophesy that God can. It's time for you to prophesy over the attack in your life. It's time for you to prophesy over your family. It's time for you to prophesy over your city. Come on, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. It's time for you to prophesy over your finances, over your health, over your children. And when you speak that prophecy, I'll bring that prophecy to pass. Because you are my daughters, saith the Lord of glory. How your Lord has spoken this day.
I woke up at 4.45 this morning. I had a dream last night about a house in Little Rock, Sister Haney, and was walking in that house, and me and my wife and, and, and the Clippers were there, and, and I turned and I said, feel so at home and such anointed in this house. And I woke up, and God spoke to me. And God said, I'm going to break the attack against the women that I've called. And I said, how are you going to do it? He said, I'm going to break it in 60 seconds. It's not going to take all day, all night. He said, I'm going to tear it loose. I'm going to shatter it in 60 seconds. He said, my anointing is going to come down. And he said, I'm going to peel off things like an onion that layer by layer that's hurt you and you fought. Come on. You thought you was going under. You're not going under. You're going over. You thought your family was going down. They're not going down. They're coming in. Good God, I wish we could get a hold of this across our movement. I wish we could get a hold of this at, at camp meetings and general conference and our conferences. Walk around your house when you get home. Unpin that hair and say, God, I've kept my covenant. My family's coming in. Revival's taking place. Now listen to me, ladies, and then I'm out of here. I got to go preach to our kids. You, when I'm preaching to our kids, you pray for me. I can reach these preachers' kids. My son Michael, one of the sweetest boys in the world. Sister Oaks knows Mike, Nick, and. They grew up with their kids. He told me, he said, I was supposed to preach the men's conference in Louisiana this year, and I, want, I wanted Mike to come. And He's assistant pastor in Texas. And, and he said, Dad, said, I'll never have a ministry like you. And I said, what do you mean? He said, you took me and showed me through the window the jail cell where you repented. He said, I wasn't delivered from drugs. He said, I never smoked a joint. And he said, you'll laugh at me probably. And I said, no, I'm not going to laugh at you. He said, I've never wanted to smoke a joint or drink. He said, when I walked down that aisle and married my wife, he said, I was a virgin, Dad. And he said, I'll tell you something. It, wasn't, it, it was because of my choice. He said, I had plenty of opportunity. But he said, I don't have that point in my life. Like you do. He said, you're, you're kind of like Paul to me. He said, Paul had this point where he was going this way and God turned him around. He said, what am I going to do? He said, I don't have that point. All I've ever known is revival. We preached the first revival they ever had in this building right here. It was out here six weeks. Kids were little. He said, all I've ever known is revival. And I said, remember when Samson killed that lion? He said, yes. And I said, remember when Samson reached in and out of the eater came forth sweetness and he killed that lion and he came back later and he reached into the past victory and took out what he had get, what he had got at the first time. I said, you know what? Kids that's raised in this church needs to have experiences and create re- experiences in their worship that they can go back and say, a Sunday night, that's where I got what Brother Mahaney got and what Jeff Arnold got and what some of these dope heads in the church got. Come on, they, our kids has got to create that and they're not going to create it until our ladies realize who they are and pray that anointing down. And God began to talk to me this morning. My wife over there sawing logs. Hallelujah. She can go to, she can be asleep before her head hits the pillow. And I said, God, how are we going to break all this in 60 seconds? And God said, remember what my daughter, Joy. He never called you sister, Haney, to me, just my daughter, Joy. He said, remember what she asked her husband? Is it okay if we go... Berserk. Is that what you said? He said, my daughters need to go Rabbi Mashugana. In Hebrew, that means very, very crazy. And I said, well, what are they going to do? He said, tell them. 
in 60 seconds. I want them to... Listen, there's nobody here for you to impress. There's not many of us can afford to go down and buy the latest brands at, at uh, some of these fancy stores. A lot of us got our clothes at, at uh, outlets and flea markets and the Goodwill and the Starvation Army. Hallelujah. And God said, here's what I want them to do. In 60 seconds, He said, under their covering, I want them to worship me in a way that their flesh will not like it. He said, I want them to worship me in a way that will offend their flesh. He said, I want them to go low mashugana. He said, I want them to worship me and go berserk. Hallelujah. 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 And I said, well, how about, and, and he said, he said, just whatever they want to do. He said, I want them to do something that will embarrass their flesh. I want them to do something that will tell their flesh don't want them to do. Some of you just then, something spoke to you and said, I want you to leave for dance or run. And, and something else said, no, I better not do that. You need to do exactly what spoke to you. Come on. Come on. I want us to take 60 seconds. I want the daughters of Zion to go crazy for Jesus for 60 seconds. Come on. And God's going to break some things in here. Come on. Don't sit there and try to look cool. Come on. we got to have a revival. Our kids are dying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. flesh is dying. You're taking your flesh to the cross. Sister Haney talked about it. Your flesh is dying. Some Jewish song. You know that we're running the that one about running on the walls, you know that or running on the walls. Or Spirit of the Lord. That's okay, shout that hair down. Come on, while you gotta shout it down, wave it over your family, wave it over your church, wave it over your revival. Listen to me. If you're shouting, I want you to stop. Listen to me. How many's ever heard of the layaway program? Walmart, the layaway. We had Clinton for 20 years in Arkansas. He taught us the layaway syndrome. You can't afford to buy it, so you go to Walmart and lay it away. How many has got prayers that you've been asking God for? You got them in layaway. Just month after month, year after year, week after week. You know what? God spoke to me, and God said, I want to show some of my daughters why the answer is not coming. He said, I want to show some of my daughters why the answer is not coming. He said, I want you to act on credit. I want you to act by faith the way you would have acted if that son had just prayed. They just brought him in here. And he said, Mom, I just got the Holy Ghost. Come on, act on credit. Act. See, that's why you don't get it. You don't move. You're the daughters of Zion. Come on, that's why you're not getting anything.
together. Come on. Two agreeing. Dance in my face. Come on. Dance my face. The Bible said, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. You know what the Hebrew word for delight means? It means to spin in a circle, to go around and around in a circle, and clap your hands and say, I am his beloved. Come on, I want us to have a delight service. I want you to spin around about seven times, five times, and say, I'm his delight. Come on, the anointing is falling in my life. The anointing is falling in my life. The anointing is falling in my life. Come on, there it is. Something broke. Something broke. Come on, something tore loose. Something broke. some drunk ladies over here we got some daughters of trying that's getting a drink tonight come on they're getting drunk over here come let us see let us rejoice come let us see